Haley Sufer, who I have known for four years now, is the chief executive officer of the Jewish Democratic Council of America. For nearly two decades, Haley has served as a national security advisor for four members of Congress in the Senate and the House, and as a senior policy advisor in the Obama administration. Prior to pro, pro, prior to joining the um, the Jewish Democratic Council of America in 2018, Haley served as the national security advisor to the then Senator Senator Kamala Harris. I had the honor of meeting her in person in the halls of Congress back when we had flipped Congress. And today, the Jewish Democratic Council of America finds key races that we are working on together, that the Grassroots Democrats HQ and Jewish Democratic Council of America can be working together on. Haley, can you please tell us a little bit about um, you, your organization, and why this election is so important? Absolutely. Well, thanks to you, Tamara, and to the Grassroots Democratic HQ. We actually met even before we flipped the house, uh, I think in the fall of 2018, when we took over a table in the HQ and had a, a weekly phone bank there. And even though uh, we're a national organization, I'm based in the DC area, uh, we had a an LA contingent that is still very committed to joining Grassroots Democratic HQ phone banks, and you really led the way. Uh, so we're just, we're grateful to be your partners and to work with you to elect Democrats. Uh, we're here today so we can ensure that we keep Virginia blue. Uh, there's been so much progress in Virginia in recent years. We were thrilled to see uh, the wins in Virginia in, in recent elections. And we have to do everything we can, not just to keep it blue in this election, which is just eight days away, but to ensure that Republicans who clearly have an agenda that's aligned with extremists do not win, whether it's the governor's mention or mansion or down the ballot. And we're thrilled to be joined today by Delegate Dan Helmer. Uh, we, we at JDCA uh, have been closely watching the races, many of them. And Helmer in particular, uh, Representative Helmer was targeted uh, in what unfortunately was not an isolated incident. There have been a series of incidents whereby the Virginia Republican Party has targeted uh, different representatives using bigotry, hatred, extremism, in this case, anti-Semitism, in other cases, racism. And it's clear that they have unfortunately learned some of the darkest lessons uh, from the Trump era, and that is the exploitation of hatred and bigotry in order to achieve uh, a Republican political agenda, in this case, getting elected. We won't allow for it. And this goes beyond just the Jewish community and Jewish voters. We won't allow for the targeting of any minority communities. We will not allow for the targeting of, uh, of Jewish candidates or Black candidates or any candidates, frankly. We won't allow for the use of hatred and bigotry, uh, certainly in this case, to get elected. And that's why we're here tonight to ensure that those Republicans are defeated from uh, Yunkin on down. And we stand with Dan Helmer. Um, I don't know if everyone was aware, but now certainly you, you are uh, in the fact that he was attacked by Republican, the Republican Party of Virginia. And we noted that Glenn Youngkin didn't say anything about it. His, he and his campaign were asked repeatedly to denounce the Republican Party's use of hatred, and he failed to. And we even saw last week him use what has been, unfortunately, a tactic used by many Republicans, and that is demonizing uh, George Soros. So it's a classic anti-Semitic trope. Um, and it's one of many reasons that the Jewish community in Virginia, but also nationally, is squarely behind, uh, is squarely behind Terry McAuliffe. Also, today is an important day um, it's the day that the neo-Nazis returned to Charlottesville four years after the Unite the Right rally, and they're returning because they're on trial, exactly where they should be. And the Jewish community remembers not only when they chanted Jews will not replace us in the streets of Charlottesville, but when Terry McAuliffe as governor at the time had the kind of leadership that we needed nationally, that of course Donald Trump failed to provide the American people and the people of Virginia, he, McAuliffe clearly condemned that kind of hatred. And in his absence, again, we've seen the Republican party now use it in this election and we are going to ensure it's defeated in just eight days.
So that's why we're here. We're here to keep Virginia blue and we're grateful for all of you for aligning with us and our values and ensuring that people like Dan Helmer and Terry McAuliffe are elected in just eight days. So thank you. Thank you so much, Haley, and thank you for the partnership that we have and for all the volunteers that are here today. As I'm finishing doing an introduction and Delegate Helmer is going to have the honor of talking to us today that we get to hear what he has to say, put into the chat right now and let us know where you are coming from. How many of you are coming here because you are from the Jewish Democratic Council of America, which is something, a group that I'm very proud to be a part of. Please also share what city and state you're coming from and any other groups that you may be a part of. Um, um, Delegate Dan Helmer um, is a West Point graduate, um, I, um, um, Iraq and Afghanistan veteran. He's Lieutenant Colonel in the Army, in the Army Reserves and a Rhodes Scholar. He runs a small business ensuring veterans have access to high quality health care. He lives in Fairfax with, with his wife Karen, a public school teacher, and their sons Aaron, Aaron and Harris, um, who, attend, who attend Fairfax County Public Schools. Um, he is the son of an immigrant and the grandson of refugees who survived the Holocaust. Helmer believes that patriotism means taking on the hard challenges of our time and putting country and community ahead of partisan politics. Today he represents Virginia's 40th district and he runs a small business ensuring that veterans have access to holiday health healthcare. One of the reasons why I want to emphasize that is that for those of us who come from other states, we do not many times realize that when somebody becomes a House of Delegates um, member, that is not a full-time job. These people are doing double, triple, and quadruple what all of us do, and they, and they are putting themselves out there to be representing. When Dan Helmer took office as part of um, um, the Virginia House of Delegates, together we have seen tremendous change for climate, for families, for health care, for voting rights. And we need to make sure that we not only hold on to our five seat majority in the House of Delegates, but that we expand upon that. And we need to make sure that we keep on the that, that we take on the governor, lieutenant governor, that we keep the, the governor, the, the lieutenant governor and, and attorney general. That trifecta that we've worked so hard in the state is what is going to carry us through until the next election. So please, Delegate Helmer, would you take a moment to please talk to us about why this election is so important and why when we're making phone calls for you today that we can make an effect on the whole election? Well, thank you so much, Tamara and Haley. I, I wanted to again thank Grassroots Democratic Headquarters. I want to thank the Jewish Democratic Council of America for putting on this event uh, and for being such a great advocate for Democrats across the country and here in Virginia. Uh, as you mentioned in your introduction, I represent Virginia's 40th district, which is parts of Fairfax County and Prince William County, where I live with my wife, Karen, who is a Fairfax County public school teacher and our two boys who go to our local public schools. I'm the son of an immigrant from Israel. My grandparents came to the United States as refugees and Holocaust survivors. And I grew up wanting to serve a country that not only welcomed my family, but gave us so much opportunity. And it's that desire to serve that took me to West Point, carried me on tours in Iraq, Afghanistan, Korea. It's why after leaving active duty, I helped build a small business here in Virginia that helps ensure veterans have access to quality health care. And that desire to serve is why three years ago, we launched a campaign to chart a different course for Virginia. We knew we needed to chart a different course for Virginia because we thought it was wrong that our General Assembly voted to deny Virginians with pre-existing conditions access to quality, affordable health care. We thought it was wrong that our General Assembly listened to only one lobby, the NRA. And we thought it was wrong that Richmond politicians thought it was okay to tell women what they could do with their own bodies. We knew it was gonna take a lot of hard work to right those wrongs, but that if we, as you're going to do tonight, engaged in conversations with our neighbors about a shared vision for our Commonwealth, we could affect real change. It's exactly what we did. We unseated a 17 year Republican incumbent in a district that had never been held by a Democrat, took the majority, elected the first Jewish speaker of the house and the first woman in the 400 year history of Virginia's House of Delegates. And we got right to work. We passed legislation in the wake of a global pandemic to put shots in arms and PPE in the hands of medical providers. We 
in the NRA's backyard, we pass universal background checks and ensure that domestic abusers can't have access to legal firearms. We pass important legislation for the Jewish community, ensuring that our synagogues could have protection in the wake of hate crimes, putting money in the hands of Jewish organizations that help those with uh, intellectual disabilities and elderly Jews. And we brought Republicans and Democrats together to pass my legislation, which puts food on the table for 25,000 families at risk of hunger here in Virginia, because sitting in a Humvee in Afghanistan, I never asked the person sitting next to me, are you Republican or are you Democrat? Instead, we work together on behalf of a shared set of values. And that's exactly how we've sought to govern in Richmond. And you don't need to look very far to see that the progress we've made is at risk. Look at Texas, where they outlaw a woman's ability to have an abortion, a right to have an abortion, even in cases of rape or incest. And the Supreme Court does nothing. Look at Florida. Outline murder. Look at Florida, where they defund public schools that require vaccines of teachers or mass of students. Look at Arizona, where they conduct a fake recount of the election to justify the insurrection on January 6th. And my opponent who deals in anti-Semitic tropes that were called by the Washington Post a front to decency, an affront to decency, stands with these people. He campaigned side by side on the trail, arms around, a January 6th insurrectionist who donates to his campaign. In the past, when my predecessor sought to outlaw abortion, criminalize it even for women who had been raped, he helped bankroll his campaign. And on November 3rd, that could be the Virginia we wake up to. We can't let that happen. And so the calls that you're making tonight are so important because we know that when we share a vision of Virginia where every single Virginian has access to healthcare, where women, not Richmond politicians, make their own healthcare decisions, where parents don't have to think about whether they're gonna buy a Kevlar backpack for their kids just so they could be safe at school from a bullet. We know when we share that vision of Virginia with voters, that they go to the polls. And we know if they go to the polls and vote, we win. So I just wanted to say how much I appreciate all of you being on the phone tonight, sharing a positive vision for Virginia, sharing what's at stake, because we know when you talk to those voters, when you make that direct voter contact, when you get them to go to the polls and to bring their friends, to explain to them that we allow you to vote early in Virginia, that you can vote every single night this week and Saturday until 7 p.m. Don't wait or go on Tuesday if you need to. If you get there out and if you get out there and vote, we can have a Virginia that we're proud of, that works for every Virginian that keeps our community safe. So thank you so much for having me tonight. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you for making these calls. Let's get out there and win.